Hey viewers, are your video recordings as good as they could be? Uh, YouTube suggested this topic for me and you clicked, so I guess you think there might be ways to improve. YouTube's AI tool generated a title and a script called The Ultimate Guide to Camera Settings for Stunning Videos. It's somewhat hyperbolic, but it's an interesting starting point. The AI script covered exposure using the exposure triangle, but didn't mention color or focus. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to expand this to a series of videos to include those topics. After writing the script, I let Apple's AI make it concise, so you'll be done in less than 10 minutes. I like Apple's AI because I still sound like me, but I did do one more rewrite after. I am the human author, host, and editor of this video, and I don't receive payment from anyone except Google AdWords, and I don't allow YouTube to interrupt my videos with ads. I'm not here to monetize your eyeballs, although you would be surprised by the number of offers I get to do just that. This video incorporates demo screens from the Panasonic G9. I've posted several versions of this video with screens from other brands. However, the guidance provided should apply to all cameras. I'll explain and then demonstrate exposure settings for video. You can use auto, but if you want stunning, go manual. In video, manual settings provide better, more editable results. If you must use auto because of changing lighting conditions, I'll share a few tips. Start by switching the camera to video mode. On the G9, set the dial to video M. Then in the menu, set the exposure mode to M for manual. Now, let's go on to the exposure settings. The concept of the exposure triangle doesn't work for video because it doesn't include two things you'll need for stunning. <laughs> I recommend the exposure pentangle, which includes five settings. Aperture, setting the size of the lens's opening to let light reach the sensor. Shutter duration, the amount of time the camera shutter is open, letting light come through from the lens to the sensor. And ISO, which for video is really gain, like a volume or brightness control. Now for those three, changing one setting requires adjustments to the other two to maintain the same exposure. But managing exposure without considering four, lighting, or five, ND filters, can limit stunning results. And they also interconnect with aperture, shutter, and ISO. Insufficient light may require a higher ISO, resulting in grainy images while excessive light can cause overexposure. Natural light can be interesting, but is often flat. Adding lights enhances clarity and definition. Now, with apologies to Johannes Vermeer, here's a sample scene. A media room studio is dark, so I'm using a single fixture from about eight o'clock to the left of the camera. More details on lighting in a minute. I set the shutter duration to 1 60th of a second. This setting is rarely used for stills, but for video, 1 60th strikes a good balance between blurriness from longer durations and choppiness from shorter ones. A 1 60th duration makes motion smooth and fluid. Now, in the film days, the rationale was more complex, but with digital cameras, it's simple. 1 60th lets in lots of light and suits most standard video frame rates. For slow motion, you'll need a shorter shutter duration. On this Panasonic camera, the aperture is set using the top dial, just behind the shutter release. Now I'm starting at eight, which is often pronounced F8. Exposure settings are expressed in F-stops. Larger openings have smaller F-stops. F4 is large opening, F16, small. Now as I change the aperture, the background becomes clearer with a small aperture and blurrier with a large one. And this is an artistic choice. If you want to draw attention to your subject, a larger aperture with a smaller F number blurs the background. Aperture and shutter duration are the physical constraints on light reaching the sensor. And both should be creative decisions more than technical ones. Now, I've left the camera at auto ISO, which you've probably noticed has been adjusting the ISO to properly expose the image. If 
changing lighting in your scene requires auto exposure, use auto ISO. And one auto tip, if the exposure doesn't look quite right, try using a different meter setting. Spot, particularly when combined with the focus spot setting, is very useful. But let's set a manual ISO. Generally, after setting aperture and shutter according to your creative decision, you'd set the ISO to expose the image as the director intended. And this may be brighter or darker than the meter, histogram or waveform display would consider correct. Let's turn off the light in my scene to demonstrate why I include lighting in my pentangle. Now, you can use meters, but I suggest you adjust the ISO until the subject's skin is properly exposed. Here that's zero on the meter or centered on a histogram. Light coming in the window is slightly over, but the milkmaid looks flat and dull. Now, light significantly impacts image quality. Again, a creative decision, but you can see how it changes and for my judgment, much improves the scene. The brightest light should come from off-center, about 30 to 45 degrees from the subject's perspective. Now I'm pointing at the light I'm using for this scene. Straight-on lighting doesn't define the subject as well. Now this applies to sunlight also. Lighting reduced the ISO needed, resulting in a clearer image. So in my comments, many of you have asked why your videos look grainy instead of sharp. My response is nearly always, add more light. Changing settings rarely improves clarity, but lighting always does. Now, a lighting technician would add more lights, but even one fixture makes a significant difference. When shooting outside, you can use the sun, but play the angle and have your subject face slightly away from it. Reflector wouldn't hurt to redirect some light either. However, the sun is bright, particularly with a shutter duration of 1 60th and a wide open aperture for that blurry background. Though I'm turning the light up to full brightness to simulate. Lowering the ISO to the minimum doesn't get exposure under control. So you could compromise your aperture or shutter duration, but even that may not be enough. Now, this is an ND filter that mounts on the front of the lens. The one I'm using here is ND8, which reduces light by three stops. This is more than this scene needs, so I raise the ISO. In bright sun, three stops may not be enough. And if you buy only one ND, ND8 is a good choice. I don't recommend the inexpensive variable ND filters, as they can add a color shift that can be uncorrectable. <laughs> I'm happy with these results thanks to my exposure pentangle, and I hope these tips help you make stunning videos. Now, this channel and this video are not sponsored. My only compensation comes from Google AdWords. No ads, no interruptions. And I will read and reply to all relevant questions and civil comments. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.